Hello, Chicago. It's good to be here. I am, I'm actually from Michigan, just right across. So I always love to be, you know, giving talks to the Midwest. You guys are good people, so I'm, I'm excited about this. So let's get started. So uh, I'm a neuroscientist. The talk is going to be about neuroscience, but it's also going to be about an exciting change that's happening in the education system, and that's sort of the democratization of, of science. And then we now have a maker revolution that's allowing us to build uh, at low cost, like, like tools that used to be only be done in a lab. And so now what we're going to learn about today is that this, this change is sort of happening, and now we're going to start to see that happening in, uh, in making what's called, what we call citizen scientists out of us. Uh, so let me give you the history of what it used to be to be a neuroscientist. And so I'm a neuroscientist. Uh, this is the brain that I studied. And in order to study the brain, I had to go to a graduate school. Uh, and so I had to spend six years in a research lab getting a PhD just to get access to the tools to understand how the brain works. You know, and that seems a bit silly. It's because one out of five of us, that's 20% of the world, uh, is going to have a neurological disorder. We have no cures for these diseases, yet I had to dedicate my life to become a neuroscientist and study the brain just to be able to understand just if the little bit hands-on how the brain works. And that's not quite how it is in other areas of science. And for example, uh, if you wanted uh, to learn astronomy, uh, you don't have to go get your PhD in astrophysics. I mean, you can just go to a store, you can buy like, a cheap telescope, you can set up in your backyard, and you can understand a little bit about how the planets move or how different things in the heavens, but the point is, you know, you can sit there and you start doing science, maybe become interested, you know, like Peter was saying, maybe interested in, in, in becoming an astronomer someday. Uh, but with the biological sciences, there is nothing like that. There's no like, cheap telescope for the brain, for example, in neuroscience, to be able to really sort of allow you at an amateur level to get access to the same tools that professionals do. Uh, so when I was in graduate school, I would work with my lab mates and we would uh, go out to schools to try to change that. We'd try to come up with kits that we would try to work with kids. We would have uh, up at the top here, there's a paper mache Frankenstein. We'd put ice cream in his brain and we would scoop out part of the brain and we would transfer that lesion to another student. And then uh, the student, if he, for example, he took out the visual cortex just back here, uh, excuse me. Uh, then the student would all of a sudden have blinders on and he couldn't see for the rest of the class. And then another student would come up to scoop out, for example, the motor cortex, which is right here. And then we would transfer that to the student, and then we would pinch his, you know, his, his arms down so he couldn't move. And that was sort of explaining that you know, different parts of the brain did different things, but it really was so different from what we were doing in the lab. We were doing really, really cool stuff in the lab, and this stuff was cool, but it's not, it was so abstract. And so around that time, my, my, one of my lab mates, Tim Marzullo, and I decided to come up with an idea. And so we published an abstract at the Society for Neuroscience, which was here in Chicago. Um, and we called it the $100 spike. And what we wanted to do is take the lab equipment that costs about $40,000 in a research lab and make it affordable enough and easy enough that even high school teachers can use it, even from fifth grade on up, be able to record the same neurons I'm recording in the lab, but now done uh, in a very simple way. And so we set it up and we uh, presented it at the conference and that's it's me on the left and that's uh, Tim on the right. Uh, and even these kits, uh, it, was, it was in a really kind of a shoddy stage. It's just like wing nuts and wood. Uh, it didn't even work. Uh, but there was so much interest from scientists when we showed this, like, like what we were trying to do. And we kept getting emails and emails and emails about this. Like, you know, when can we buy one? So we're thinking, hmm, you know, this may be a good idea. And so uh, we did just that. So we, we started with our prototype, which we, which we got working. Uh, and we kept working on it, working on it, working on it, working on it, until finally we had a, a version that actually works. And so this is uh, what we call the spiker box. And the spiker box it replaces a whole rig. It was in a lab and allows you to record living brain cells inside the brain. So we're going to do that today. Uh, and we're going to use not a high-tech computer, but we're going to use students' phones, for example, to be able to record the neural activity and actually be, record that and analyze that as well. So we start doing real data analysis. All right, so uh, before I go into the experiments, let's, just, let's do a brief recall on what neuroscience is and what the brain is and what neurons are. Does everyone know what neurons are? Give a shout out. All right, not many people. This is interesting. So this, but this is, sort of talks about why we need to do this neuroscience earlier. One-fifth, 20% of the world is a neurological disorder, and no one really even knows what the basic cell in the brain is. So we'll, I'll show it to you guys. This is the neuron. There's a cell body, and there's a long axon that reaches out. 
Uh, and so that's the, through this axon is where information gets passed from one cell to the other. The information comes uh, in the form of electricity, and that electricity comes from one cell all the way over to the other cell, and then you do this enough times, you got 100 billion of these cells, and that's how we're able to see, it's how we're able to think, it's how we're able to move. And so this is doing all through electricity, and the electricity comes in small packets called a spike, which is sodium and potassium channels that are opening up really quickly and allows your brain to function. And so you guys are probably thinking, what am I talking about? Let's do some demos. You guys ready? Yeah. All right. Let's hear you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So we're not going to use, uh, as we said earlier, we're not going to use my brain. I'm not going to invite someone up here to, and drill into your head. Uh, I'm going to actually use the brains of la cucarachas. These are uh, South American cockroaches, uh, which allow us, whoopsies here. All right, so first thing we're going to do is I'm going to pull out these cockroaches. All right, whoa, no, <laughs> disaster. All right, you got this, Paris? Yep. All right, so I have a, uh, this is a South American cockroach, and what I'm going to do first, I'm going to anesthetize him in ice water. I'm going to dunk him in some ice water. You guys see him moving around, so there's no, there's no tricks here. This guy's alive. I'm going to put him in ice water for just a few moments. Does anyone know why we're doing this? What do you think? These guys are what? Are they warm-blooded? Cold-blooded. All right, so then that means that they become instantly the same temperature as the ice water. So even after a few seconds, these guys will stop moving. You're wondering, why does it stop moving just because it's cold? It's because those ion channels, those sodium and potassium channels, stop moving when it gets colder, things slow down, and then he stops moving and he stops feeling pain as well. Okay, and so why am I knocking him out is because we're going to do a surgery right now and I'm going to remove one of his legs so that we can record the neurons that are inside the legs. So I'm going to take this guy out here and I'm going to cut one of his legs off right there. Oh yeah, gross. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put him back under the ice. All right, so let me go back to the slides really quick. I want to talk briefly about what we're doing here. Uh, so this is a, a leg of the cockroach. If you were to look in there, you see all these beautiful hairs are going down the leg. And those hairs, I mean, they allow him to crawl up things, but they also allow him to do something interesting, which is be able to detect the world around him. Inside each hair is a neuron. That neuron is going to send electrical messages up to the brain. And so even though I cut the leg off, the brain doesn't know that. And so the, so the legs are going to keep sending messages back and forth, right? And so it's going to try to get information to the brain, even though the brain's not there. So... Now that we've warmed the leg back up, those neurons will start firing again, and we should be able to listen in to how the brain actually functions. So I'm going to take the, uh, the leg. I'm going to put a couple of pins on the leg. And so these are a positive and negative pin. And if you remember from science, you need two points for electricity. So I'm going to put one reference right here in what we call the coxa, which is the back, where we don't think there are neurons. I'm going to put one into the femur where I do think there are neurons. I'll put that there. All right, can you guys see that so far? So that's just the cockroach leg. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn on the speaker and we're gonna listen to what the brain sounds like. Can everyone hear that? And so when I ask people what this sounds like to them, they give me a couple of answers. They say it sounds like raindrops, so it sounds like frying bacon. But that's actually how the brain, that's how your brain sounds like. If I were to like, put a wire into your brain, you would hear the exact same like, sounds because the neurons that are inside of your brain are very, very similar to the neurons that are inside this cockroach leg. Isn't that bizarre? Yeah, so it's the beauty of, the beauty of nature. Things are conserved. All right, so now what we can do is we're, gonna, we're not only going to listen to it, we're going we're gonna to actually turn on this iPad here, which I've plugged in. And we're going to hopefully see that as well. Oh, that's so beautiful. All right, so now what we're looking at here you can see those little spikes that are going by. Those are the action potentials, those are the spikes. Those are those messages that are being sent from the leg to the brain, even though the brain's in here. Uh, and so what would happen, do you think, if I were to touch that leg? Maybe, yeah, maybe it sends a message. We'll find out. So I'm going to go ahead and touch the leg. Whoa, you guys see that? So you're, what you're actually looking at is information. So that's information being encoded in spikes, being sent to the brain. So you imagine this is like... This is me touching a leg. It would be like the same if I were to touch Paris in the shoulder. He feels that because if he has a neuron there, sending it to his brain. So the same thing when you see things, these neurons fire. And so this is how everything works for the sensory input into the brain. 
All right, so let's go back to slides really quick. And turn this off. We're going to come back. We're going to do more experiments. All right, so this is it. So this is the... Uh, when people first see the, uh, the, the spikes for the first time, these are not doctored photos. These are real students in Detroit that listen to spikes for the first time. And it's a wonderful thing. You see it over and over again. It's portable, so we can get citizens involved. You can bring it onto a plane. We can actually show spikes on a plane and actually get people to come sit down next to you and talk neuroscience. Uh, we can actually make kits and allow kids to understand it. We can give them the schematics as open source. We can tell them how to put it together. And not only that, what do each of the knobs do? You know, uh, so we can allow put on workshops, allow citizens to sort of build these kits and to start to develop their own experiments. And we put those experiments up online for everyone to use. Uh, and so I just want to do one quick more experiment here. Uh, we're going to use uh, the brain. Not only takes in information, it also sends information back out to the muscles. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to take, instead of my brain, I'm going to send uh, information coming out from my cell phone, and I'm going to play some hip-hop music, which has electricity, very similar to the electricity that's in our brain, into this leg, and we're going to see what happens when we sort of send a little bit jolt of electricity inside this cockroach leg, and we're going to see what happens, very similar to an experiment that Louis, Luigi Galvani did many, many years ago. So you guys ready for this? Can you guys zoom in on that? Let me turn it this way. All right, so what you're seeing is the cockroach leg, if you can move in there. So when the bass frequency is playing, you're going to see a little twitching of the leg. And the reason why that is, okay, we can cut that off. I'm gonna, I just want to jump to one more video that shows it even better. Uh, so what we're going to do now is I want to show you what happens this is a squid uh, that you can catch in, in May, off the shores of, May, or of uh, Boston. And I've done the same experiment here, but now this is inside the brain of a squid. And so the brain of the squid sends information down to the skin to change the colors. So now we're going to listen to what happens when you play hip-hop music into a squid. And now we're going to be looking at it through a microscope, and I'm looking down on it. So we're going to hopefully have some audio here. Don't you know I'm loco, loco? <laughs> <laughs> so what this is, these are the cells, the chromatophores inside the squid that open and close, like they're little tiny muscles that open and close, which allow the, the, the uh, cephalopods to sort of change their color on uh, demand by the brain. So what we've done is we've just put a little bit of electricity on there, set the signal down to the muscles, and the muscles will expand because they think it's coming from the brain. So you can actually do this quite, pretty well. And so one, we're going to do a couple more experiments now. I want to hurry up here. So let's go to the next uh, thing, and I want to actually get a volunteer from the audience. I want to actually record the neurons from people through the, the muscular activity. Can I get one volunteer from the audience? Yes, what's your name? Yeah, you're right there. Come on down. Yeah, perfect. All right. Two minutes. All right, the first thing I'm going to do, I want to hook you up. And then I'm going to get one more volunteer. So I'm going to get the volunteer now. Uh, the next volunteer, what we're going to do, I'm going to record the electric, electrical activity. Uh, what's your name? Caro. Caro. I'm going to record the electrical activity from Caro. And we're going to amplify it. And we're going to stick it into someone else's arm. So we're going to record your brain. We're going to amplify it and control another brain. So do we have another volunteer that would be willing to sort of give it up? Yeah, what's your name? Dish. Dish? Come on down. All right. So let's hook you up really quick. Are you guys ready for this? All right, so the first thing I need to do, is I'm gonna put a couple pads on you. Let's open up your, your sleeve. Which one do you wanna do? All right, That's, this one's cool, I like that. All right, so I'm gonna put an electrode. This is based on a bunch of salt water, that, which is on, allows the sodium and potassium to sort of connect to the metal. I'm gonna put one uh, ground right here. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hook you up to here. I'm gonna put this one here. And this one here. Yeah. Do you guys know each other? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And very. Yeah. Very much so. Okay. So now I'm gonna t we're gonna have you do something. Now. Yeah, okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to squeeze your hand. All right. Yeah. Perfect. So I want you to squeeze up like you're like revving a motorcycle. All right. So now what we have here, if you look here on this, on this Arduino, what we've done is we've amplified your electricity. So we're going to turn on LEDs. 
So when that red LED comes on, we've, we've amplified the electricity enough that we're gonna be able to move, make your arm move. All right, is you in? All right, so <laughs> is you in or is you in? All right, Dish you said it was? Nish. Nish. Yeah. All right, let's do your left hand as well. So what I'm gonna do now, there's, you have a vagus nerve that runs down here. Okay. That's your funny bone. And I'm gonna try to hit this such that when she moves her arms, and you can actually hear, and what you're hearing now is her motor cortex setting it down to her spinal cord out to the, to the speaker. And now we're gonna stick it into your arm and we will make a brain-computer interface to a brain-brain interface. How's that? Okay. Whoopsie. All right, we'll stand right here. All right, I've got you, I've got you hooked in. And we're almost done here. I'm going to go and turn it on. You're going to feel a little bit of pinching. What's going to be is an electrical charge that will come in there. Okay. It's going to hit that nerve, and you should be able to feel these, these things without you control. So you okay. completely have lost your free will of that left arm. Okay. And you are now completely in control of his left arm. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's try it. And this is using, let me turn this down for a second. Now I'm going to turn it up a little bit. So we're going to go ahead, and when you, when you move, go ahead. Whoa. Uh, to do, <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> All right. So now, now we can do a really quick experiment. So now do it again so people can see that. So you're, you are controlling. All right. So that's you. So, so, so you look the other way. All right. So that's legit. That's okay. So now the question is, what happens if I were to move your arm? Why is that? Hmm. Ah. So it has to be your brain sending it down to the command to your muscles, amplifying the electricity, going in there, and then making your arm move. All right. All right. So that, thank you so much. That was the last experiment right now. Thank you. You can have a seat. Thank you so much. You're done. Yeah. You can keep those. <laughs> well, we have the slides really quick. I'll just, I just want to say. Uh, so what we're doing here is we're trying to uh, create neuroscience tools available for basically fifth grade on up. We are in 64 countries and all seven continents, including Antarctica. Uh, and now, wait for this, we are gonna be on the eighth continent. Starting next year, we have a, 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 an agreement with NASA to send our stuff into space to be able to do some ex experiments both on Earth and in space. So that's it, and I wanted to thank you all for, for your time, and I want you to please bring on the neural revolution. Thank you.